and especially that the cold winds of winter lie not far ahead. Not my favorite season by any stretch. The times of year I love the most are when things are growing and blooming, changing and producing. No, fall is not my favorite season, but it does mark a major cycle in the year, and perhaps it offers a metaphor for human life as well. Perhaps fall can, be, can offer us a symbol of what our lives can be as each of us transitions with each passing year to later and later stages in our own life. Actually, I liken the metaphor of the fall and the seasons of the year to the stages of life that are considered by the followers of Hindu philosophy and religion. Remember, the word Hindu is, doesn't describe one set of beliefs, one religion. It's kind of an umbrella name for a lot of different um, religions. It's kind of like actually Christianity is an umbrella for a whole lot of different rituals, practices, and beliefs. Hindus emphasize that each human being is unique and that each person must follow his or her own unique path. There isn't a right way. There's no common type of person. Each person is different, it is said. But Hindus suggest that human life in general has four phases to it. The first stage is called the student. And it's the time when a person's, in a person's youth where physical growth, learning about one's body and the world around them, occupy their time and their energy. It's a time for schooling and apprenticeship. It is a time of great transitions. It is like the season of spring in the yearly cycle. The person is new, is young, is green, is growing. They're like a blooming flower which unfolds with beauty and with grace. The second stage of life is thought by Hindu, Hindus to be that of householder. This is the stage where family and career and community are of the greatest importance in a person's life. During this period, a person's physical and mental powers are at their zenith. Their energy turns outward into the world. Personal desires such as wealth and power and fame are given great attention. It's like the season of the summer. It's the time when the person grows the most and produces the most. It is, you might say, the hottest time of a person's life. Unfortunately, many people, particularly in our culture, are ne never able to leave this stage of life. They become stuck. They refuse to ease or abandon their desires of passion and passion of wealth and power and control. They refuse to acknowledge that their body is growing older, that their physical beauty is on the ebb. The greatest sadness is that the physical body will in inevitably continue to age, and a person stuck in the phase of householder can lose their sense of meaning in life if they attach such meaning to their physical beauty and their power and control. No matter how important a person is, no matter how great their contribution to humankind, they and all their accomplishments will inevitably fade into the vast halls of time, like the brilliance of a tropical sun which falls below the horizon, its light eclipsed by eternal night. People who were once great and powerful become shadows of their former selves. Their names and their works eventually become lost in the annals of time. I remember one time uh, visiting someone in my congregation in, in the hospital, and as I went into the elevator, there was a man lying on a gurney. He, he had no clothes on, he just had a sheet over him. And I said hi as he went by, and he kind of mumbled hi back. I visited my congregant. When I came back, he was still there. And so I asked the nurses what was going on, and they said, oh, he's, he's waiting for surgery. Did you know that guy was CEO of such and such a company, which was a major company in New York? And here he was, a wealthy person, famous in his own right, CEO of a major corporation, 
lying on a hospital gurney, forgotten by everybody around him. In the words of Houston Smith, generation after generation swells briefly like a wave that breaks upon the shore, subsiding into the anonymous fellowship of death. Some people are simply never able to change and tra transition to later stages in life. Some people even lose their ability to interact with the people and the times of a younger generation as they grow older. They become fixated in bygone eras. They spout trite cliches like the good old days or things are going to hell in a handbasket or this generation is in decay. Writers and politicians have been using these phrases for thousands of years. And curiously, every succeeding generation seems to eventually adopt these phrases. So just when were the good old days? Does every succeeding generation really move into deeper and deeper into decay from some glorious long ago age? No. It's also unfortunate that our own society and culture encourage people not to transition to later stages in life, not to accept that age will bring change, both physical and mental. Unlike many cultures in the world, American society has lost its respect for age. In many cultures, it's the direct opposite. In many cultures, age is revered, honored, and hoped for. But in America, instead of integrating older people into our society, we often segregate them by encouraging them to leave the mainstream of society. Some families abandon their older relatives. We hear ads that offer older people dreams and visions of a good life that in other parts of the country, like Florida or the Southwest. In our society, it's as though we suggest a person's life should be an eternal summer. That fall cannot and must not be able to enter a person's life. To do so is not okay in our society. And of course, product manufacturers and marketers cater to human vanity by promising to reduce, reverse, stall, or change the aging process. I'm fighting it every step of the way, says one woman in a TV commercial. Does she really think she's gonna win? And tell me, what looks more absurd than an older person who attempts to look and act like an adolescent? But there can be, there can be a third stage to life if we allow it to be so. For Hindus, this is the time of retirement. It's the time that is called the forest dweller. This is a time when the person and often their spouse or partner expends most of their energy considering the larger questions of life. They search for life's meaning. They immerse themselves in spiritual quests. They look, in the words of the Hindu, not at the village streets, but beyond the stars. The priorities of society and career, and sometimes even family, are left behind. Eternity alone remains. In their spiritual quests, older people often explore various avenues of discovery. Some travel. Some have find more time to read. Some do volunteer work. Some take on a new hobby. There are limitless ways of seeking the spiritual. I've mentioned this before, and you'll hear it over and over again. There are. In my mind, retirement is a time when a person can develop a new but different kind of beauty. It's like the time of the fall. Who here cannot resonate with the magnificent beauty of a New England fall, where once a green blanket of forest leaves sweltered in a summer heat now there shines brilliant hues of gold and red and brown emblazoned in a cold, crisp, and sunlit air. We marvel at the changing seasons, yet we run in terror from the seasons of human life. We acknowledge the beauty of the spring and the summer, and we watch with awe the changing leaves of fall, yet we refuse to see the beauty in our own brother and sister creatures who are following the same path of nature. It is as though we are fixated on an eternal spring, a spring that is not possible in this world. Fall is a time of harvest. 
It's a time when all that is, has been produced can be gathered together to sustain life in the future. So too is the human fall. The later years in life can be a time of harvest. It is when wisdom and personal growth can be the greatest because it is the time when a person is seasoned with all their life experiences. That wisdom comes with age is not a given. Age doesn't bring wisdom. Wisdom must be sought after, and this is a lifelong activity. In my view, wisdom comes by integrating all the phases of life that I've mentioned, spring, summer, and fall. I guess what I'm suggesting is that to find wisdom, we all need to live and relive the different stages of our life throughout all of our life. We need to integrate the student, the householder, and the forest dweller. A piece of us must retain youth and youth, youthful thinking. A piece of us must strive to be connected to family, community, and career, whatever that might be. And a piece of us must reach forth into the spiritual dimension to consider the ultimate questions of life. Just as time moves on and the seasons repeat their cycles, our lives must move on and repeat the cycles that enable us to grow as people. This is how wisdom is arrived at. Age without seasons is just that. It's age. Life can and will lose meaning if we do not integrate the seasons of life into our heart. If we do not recall the learnings of youth, the experiences of middle age, and combine them with the feelings, spiritual and otherwise, that we arrive at in the later stages of life. We all know this is intuitively true. All of us know older friends and family who become so possessed by their aging, they focus only on their bodies, not on their heart and their soul. We know older people who cease to discuss anything in the world except the ills of their body, and the turns of the weather, and the day that fills up their whole day. So what's happened to these people? If a person takes the attitude that the later years in life are nothing but a fight against inevitable death, their life will be nothing but a miserable struggle against forces they cannot and will not control. But the later years in life can be the most rewarding the most inspiring, the most beautiful. I'm reminded here of the phase of the century cactus. When I was in seminary in Berkeley, California, many years ago, a friend of mine invited me out to his family weekend home in the woods of Sonoma County. During our time together, we found ourselves discussing the merits or lack thereof in growing older. I was only 35 at the time, so I didn't think I would grow older. <laughs> Amazing how that happens. Later during our conversation, he took me out to the edge of his property, and there stood a magnificent cactus. It was eight feet tall. It was beautiful. But more spectacular was a stem which reached upward from the middle of the cactus and went 25 feet up into the air. And on the top of the stem was this huge, brilliant orange and yellow flower. Upon seeing my amazement at the beauty of this cactus and its flower, my friend explained to me that this was a century cactus which bloomed only once in its long life. It seems as if this particular type of cactus lives from 80 to 100 years. And about one year before the cactus dies, a stiff stem, stem begins ascending into the sky way into the sky, 25 or more feet. Finally, a brilliant flower appears which lasts for several weeks, and then the entire plant dies. Human life can be like this too. Our grandest moments, our greatest growth, our greatest wisdom can come towards the end of life if we choose to make this happen. There is a fourth stage that Hindus recognize, and they call this stage a, the Sanison or the saint. A Sanison is a person who has reached a great depth in spiritual discovery. They have completely moved beyond the desires of wealth and fame and passion and beauty that dominate earlier phases of life. They've become detached 
from personal desire. To be sure, not very many people achieve the stage of Sanison, and Hindus think it's actually fairly rare. But note that this stage is considered by Hindus to come at the end of life, not at the beginning or the middle. It's recognized that a person must achieve all the other stages of life before sainthood is possible. Can the stage of Sanison or Saint be likened to the season of winter as I've likened the other stages to spring, summer, and fall? That, of course, depends upon your own theology and belief and what happens at the end of life and beyond. For me, the seasons are a clue about life and death in general. I see spring as the beginning of new life, and I see winter as the end. What was once alive and changing and growing is no longer alive. But perhaps death, like winter, is a transition to a new beginning because a new spring is going to come. But all the theology, all the creeds, all the dogmas will not answer ultimate questions for sure. Each person can only answer ultimate questions for themselves in some way. This may mean adopting a particular religious viewpoint, or it may mean developing one's thoughts and ideas or dreams and visions. It is and must be a very personal thing. I'll certainly consider this in the future sermon because I got a lot to say about it. But despite what we know and what we don't know, there are certainly things we can know. We can know that life, all the stages of life, although different, can be well worth living if we choose to make it so. Integrated together throughout a lifetime, a person who finds an experience and lives all the seasons of life will be happy and wise and whole. They will be a joy unto themselves and to those who share in their life. Peace be with you. Please join in our closing hymn number 54.